Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Thank you so much for tuning in to my channel today. As you can tell by the title, today's video is all about my birth story and my birth vlog. I am currently nursing right now. I have a really short, um, I have a really short window to be able to film this video today. So it just so happened that he needed to eat right this minute. So he will be joining us for today's video. Um, and unfortunately during the actual birth, like when I was pushing and when he came out, they did not allow us to film, which is, I was so bummed about but i did get footage before and after the birth um so i'll be including all of that in the video and then also going and then obviously going over all of the birth stories so if you're interested in any of that then let's go ahead and jump into it channel and you've never seen any of my videos before real quick background um, for this pregnancy and my last pregnancy I was diagnosed with cholestasis and when you have cholestasis they in typically induce you between 36 and 37 weeks because the further you get in your pregnancy it's harmful to the baby so this pregnancy I was induced at 36 in one day and I ended up having him 36 in two days so since he was pretty much four weeks early um obviously i was very very concerned really nervous about NICU time and you know his size and all those things so i kind of just wanted to preface that in case you've never seen any of my videos before so my birth story started uh, the day that i was induced that was monday january 25th little guy is now three weeks old and they had us come in for a 6 p.m induction time so we got to the hospital it was a ghost town due to covid i feel like there was nobody walking around it was so quiet we went up to the labor and delivery it was so quiet up there um we got checked into our room what's the time 6 19 p.m january 25th 2021 is it 25th mm -hmm. Up. Just changed. All right, how do you feel? Freaking scared. I'm so nervous. What are you nervous about? Recovering. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just. Ooh. Yeah, I don't know. I really don't. I'm just jittery. How do you feel? No jitters. Stop zooming in on my raccoon eyes. Stop. This is where baby will be. Come on, get over here. Baby, we'll be there. And hopefully, not too long. But. Okay, so we'll tour the room. Just waiting. Take a COVID tester. And then get the show on the road. And pretty soon after, I immediately got started on an IV once um, I changed into a hospital gown and things like that. I got started on an IV. Um, and then pretty soon after that, I got tested for COVID because if you test positive for COVID, then they confine you to the room that you're in for your entire stay. So you cannot leave, you can't walk around, you can't get anything from the car. Um, you're stuck in that room until you're discharged. So they test you for COVID um, just to see how they have to proceed. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, you will not know this story, but exactly one week before I was induced, um, my husband tested positive for COVID, um, which was so nerve wracking. I was nervous I was gonna get it, and I was also nervous that he wouldn't be able to be in the hospital with me. So about 12 days before I was induced, he started having some symptoms, um, but he actually had the first vaccine. Um, and so he did not think that he got it so then after a couple days passed it started getting worse and worse and he's like that's very odd he's like i should get tested just in case just to be safe to see how you know we ha will have to proceed 100 percent thinking that he was not going to have it um so he got tested on saturday nine days before my induction and then the results came back on monday exactly one week before my induction that he was positive so immediately the first thing that he asked them when they called was how do like am i going to be allowed in the hospital will i be cleared by next monday so they told him you know what day did you test he tested on saturday so that was day one and then um 10 days after that would have been next monday the monday after which is the day that i was induced so the first day that he was cleared was my induction date thank heavens i was so nervous so then we also had to call the hospital just to make sure that they were okay with that procedure um with going you know that route obviously like do you do the 10 day or do you do the 14 day it was just a huge mess long story short he was able to be cleared the day that i was induced thank goodness but then we were also concerned that i would end up having it 
and that if our little guy had to go to the NICU, we would not be allowed to go or that I would have to push with a mask on. There was just a few things that I was so concerned about. Since he was coming a whole month early, chances are that he would you know, go to the NICU for a couple days or even a few hours. And if I tested positive, we would not have been allowed to go with him. So it was just such a nerve wracking week leading up to being induced. Um, just wondering if I was gonna get it super nerve nerve wracking and then obviously like having covid and trying to push out a baby and caring for a baby that's hard stuff so we were so nervous thankfully we got to the hospital um, after i got my iv they checked me for covid thankfully a couple hours later they came back and i tested negative for covid thank goodness and since my husband had already had it we were both able to take off our masks for the whole our whole stay it was such a relief it's been 30 minutes He's already breaking into the snacks. <laughs> be a long night. <laughs> He's already stressed out about not eating. <laughs> it's a seven twenty. And then seven forty five p.m. That was the first time that I got my cervix checked to see if I was dilated at all. I was not. I was closed at a zero completely just nothing going on. So then I got my dose of Cytotec at 8.30. Um, Cytotec is supposed to ripen your cervix. And really, really quickly, my body started responding. I started having contractions every like two and a half to three minutes, I would say. Um, and they were very, very consistent, like it pain wise. They were, I felt like I was at like a three-ish um, as far as like pain goes, just basing it off of my last pregnancy. Um, very, very consistent contractions every two to three minutes for hours, hours. So then the nurse came to check me at 12.30 to give me my second dose of Cytotec. And they also checked my cervix again to see where I was at. I was still at a zero. And I'm like, why am I, I'm having so many contractions so consistently, like, what does that mean? Uh, she's like, oh, it could mean nothing. And I was like, Cool, thanks. <laughs> then at 2 a.m., so just an hour and a half later, um, she actually came in um, to give me more saline because I was having, she said, too many contractions. And I was like, isn't that a good thing? She was trying to like slow them down. I'm like, I'm not, anyways, I didn't really get like why she wanted to slow them down. I thought that was a good thing. But anyways, so she gave me saline to hopefully slow them down. Um, they never slow down, ever. Um, and then at 4.30, when I was supposed to get my third dose of Cytotec, the nurse came in and told me that I was still having too many contractions. So I never got the third dose of Cytotec. She just kind of let my body keep doing its thing. Um, but I was still at a zero. So I was so disheartened. I'd already been like in labor once the contraction started for seven hours um, or seven or eight hours and nothing. She said I wasn't progressed at all. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like I've been having so many contractions. I didn't sleep a wink all night long. Um, I kept having to get up and go pee like every 30 minutes, um, which was so frustrating because I had all the monitors on me and the IV and I had to, it was just so annoying to have to go to the bathroom so many times during the night. Um, and I'm like, I didn't progress at all. And I was like on the verge of crying because I was just so disheartened. I'm like, oh my gosh, I've had like the worst painful night ever and I'm like nowhere. And then my OB got there at 7 a.m. She checked me and I was, at, she said between a three and a four. And I was like, oh my gosh, okay, so I'm progressing. My body is starting to do what it's supposed to do. I'm starting to progress. I was so excited. Cause after laboring for like eight hours and still being at a zero, I was so disheartened and just really like, I just needed some encouragement. Um, so when she came in and said that I was at a three or four, I was thrilled. documenting documenting we're just... a three or a four i'm gonna say four because i'm shooting for the stars uh, four oh, yeah a nice brown bag breakfast mm -hmm. oh are we doing an unboxing or are we talking about like, the progress of labor no we're doing an unboxing this oh is, okay this is gonna be your viral youtube success <laughs> okay. right here 
Okay, well, I'm going to talk about my Join me with my no, unboxing no. of my we're breakfast gonna, at the no, hospital. Sh- we're going to get Pitocin, and then pretty soon we'll get an epidural. Oh, I'm so excited. Did you get any sleep? Like, in- increments? Yeah, I got a couple hours. Can you tell that I got sleep? I'm very rested. <laughs> Um, after she came and checked me though, knowing that I was gonna have the baby sometime that day, I decided to take my mind off of, you know, being in pain and I did my makeup. I sat up in the bed and I even stood for a little bit and was just did some really light makeup just so I can feel like a human. That was something that I regretted not doing last time. Um, I just felt a lot more put together um, and I was really glad I did. So, gosh, I'm so nervous, excited. It's like such a weird feeling, but. Anyways, my guess is that he's going to be, so he's four weeks early. I, I'm guessing that he's going to be 7'2", and I think he'll have red hair like Davis, but we'll see. Then after I did my makeup, the nurse came in again, and she's like, yep, your contractions are getting pretty strong. I'm thinking you're, you know, making some progress. Um, and so then she told me that the anesthesiologist was going in for a C-section, so that if I wanted to get an epidural, you know, in the near future, then I should put in for it now so that he can come in once he's done. Um, and I was so nervous to get the epidural too early to where it wouldn't work as well at the end. Um, and she reassured me that she's like, no, she's like, your body is making good progress. You will definitely still be able to have the epidural at the end. So at around 8.30, um, I put in for the epidural, um, and then an hour or so later, around 9.30, the um, anesthesiologist came, did my epidural, and pretty soon after that, I was feeling amazing. I love epidurals. I'm a big fan of epidurals. Um, my first pregnancy, I was really, really gung-ho about doing a natural birth, and I tried for as long as I could to do a natural birth, and I was really committed. Um, and after getting an epidural last time and then getting one this time, I am just the biggest epidural fan. They're the best. They make me enjoy my labors and my deliveries. It was just great. It's a video. Video. Got my epidural. I'm feeling amazing. <sighs> I'm in contractions. Can't even feel them. Oh, I feel so great. Um, and then to get the baby to move down more, they put the peanut ball in between my legs and they kept switching me back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I tried so hard to get a nap in because I did not sleep the entire night, like literally not even a wink. I was wide awake with contractions every two, three minutes. So then a few minutes after um, I got the epidural, my blood pressure started to drop. Um, which can be harmful to the baby if it gets like bad enough. So they just played it safe and they gave me oxygen for a while. And then once that was under control, we were kind of left alone for like a little bit. So I was able to close my eyes for a few minutes, about like maybe a 20 minute nap in, a couple of 20 minute nap in, naps in, which was ideal. I really wanted to have like a little tiny bit of sleep before I had to push out the baby. So then about an hour later, right around noon, um, a, doc- a different doctor came in to check me to see if I would progressed anywhere between 7 a.m. and noon, and I was still at a four. And within a five hour period, I was still at the same spot, and I was like, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? I was so bummed. But at this point, I had no Pitocin yet, um, and they were just kind of letting my body do what you know it was supposed to do and see how it would go. So once he checked my body and it was still at a four, um, he decided to break my water and then they started the Pitocin. So Pitocin is really supposed to kickstart everything and it did, thankfully. So after he broke my water, started the Pitocin, an hour and a half later, that's it, just an hour and a half later, I had progressed to an eight. I was thrilled, let me tell you. I was really starting to get very down. Um, it had been like 16 hours since my labor had started and I was still at a four. Um, And then just an hour and a half later, after they had started the Pitocin um, and broke my water, I was at an eight. I vividly remember telling Timmy, I was like, hell yeah, and they gave him a high five. I was so excited. 
because I'm like, okay, my body can do it. We can get this baby out pretty soon. Like I saw the light at the end of the tunnel at this point. I was so happy. Um, so that was at 1.30 p.m. I was at an eight um, and then, um, oh, and then the nurse came back in and she's like, okay, you're probably progressing like pretty quickly. She came back like 45 minutes, maybe an hour later. She checked me again and I was there. I was out of 10, ready to go. Um, and I was so pumped. So she's like, okay, your doctor's coming from the office, which is like 10 minutes away, 15 minutes away maybe. Um, she's like, okay, she's on her way. Let's start pushing. Let's start doing practice pushes. Let's get the baby close. So then when she gets here, she can just deliver. Um, and I was like, oh my gosh, are you serious? <laughs> so basically in like two hours, I went from a four to a 10. And while we were in labor and you know, the nurse kept coming in, seeing how we were doing, obviously you kind of have small talk. Um, my husband, you know, told them that he was a firefighter that came up um, and the nurse asked him, she's like, hey, like, have you ever delivered a baby in the field before? And he's like, no, he's like, I've trained to do it, but I haven't actually done it. And she's like, do you wanna like deliver your baby? And he's like, yeah, let's do it. And at this point, this was at around 2.30 p.m., I was starving. So I hadn't eaten in almost 24 hours. I had like a couple little snacks, like a couple little pretzels, a couple bites of like a protein bar, but I hadn't actually like eaten a meal in, it was about 24 hours and I was starving. I was so hungry. And they told me that, you know, once everything kind of got started, I wasn't supposed to eat, um, but I didn't care. And I had like half a protein bar and then pretzels. Cause I was like, if I don't have at least something i'm gonna be useless like i am not gonna be very helpful during this process so anyways um when we started pushing i was like oh my gosh i am starving i had no energy none it was like i like couldn't fight through it it was like the weirdest thing it was uh, oh my gosh i'm like the mental game i was not in it at all i was starving i was in so much pain so after a few pushes of me being like basically no help at all <laughs> the nurse turned down my epidural so that i could feel the contraction so i could feel like when to push and i could be most effective that way um and that did seem to help but it was so painful like the contractions mixed with like the hunger pains i feel like were so painful in my stomach it like hurt so bad to push. I feel like I read a lot of um, doing a natural birth and how pushing you like almost felt a sense of relief afterwards, but I didn't feel that at all. I, it like hurt so bad to push. Like when I would like push with all my might, it like hurt my stomach so bad. So I didn't know if that was like hunger pains or contractions or both, or I had no idea, but it was freaking painful. I did not do a good job pushing. I was not like, I don't know, I was trying to be there mentally, but I was just like physically not there. So the, then the OB came in and she's like, he's 36 weeks, he should just be flying out of here, like with his size. Um, and I'm like, okay, like I'm really trying, like I'm trying to push, I really am. Um, and then about an hour passes um, and they're like, okay, you're getting closer, you're getting closer, closer, closer. Um, and I was just trying with every fiber of my being to push as well as I could. I just don't feel like I did a very good job. Anyways, um, so then we were getting near the edge and they're like, okay, dad, like you come over here. And they suited him up with, you know, gloves, the cape, it's not called the cape, the gown or whatever, um, and the mask and all that stuff. And so he was like ready to deliver. And I was like, okay, we're getting close, we're getting close. And once I knew that we were actually getting close, I was had a little more fight in me. Um, but what he kept doing was like, his head would start to come out and then it would go back all the way up and then it would start to come out and then it would go back in. He just like wouldn't stay like in one spot. And they're like, okay, he should just be coming out. Like he should be small. You know, he's a month early. He should just be flying out or whatever. And I was like, okay, like I'm trying. And honestly, the contractions hurt so bad. Like I felt everything in my stomach. Thankfully, I did not feel anything down there. I didn't feel any pain. Hallelujah, I was so nervous about that. But I felt everything like in my stomach. I felt all the contractions, all of the, you know, tension. And when the contractions start to build up, I just like, I felt all of it. Um, anyways, and so that was so dang painful. And I feel like since it was so painful, it made me reserved when I was pushing because it hurt so bad. Um, so anyways, finally, once he suited up, I was like, okay, we got this, we're almost there. Started to get really into it. Timmy was, again, the best birth coach ever. And I would just 
pretty much just focused on him and what he was saying. There was probably like seven or eight people. There was lots going on in the room, lots of people. Because again, since he was a preemie, they, you know, you don't know what condition the baby will be in. So there was a whole team of like four nurses there ready to take him if anything were to go south. Um, so thankfully, even though we weren't able to film, which I was so bummed about, um, one of the nice NICU nurses who was basically just waiting for him to come out, she grabbed my phone out of Timmy's pocket and was able to snap a ton of pictures like while he was coming out, which was amazing. I am so glad that we at least have those um, to look back on. Um, so anyways, uh, Timmy's down there. The doctor started the delivery. She got the head and part of the shoulders out and then Timmy finished the rest. Um, so then when he jumped in there, he's like, look, look, look. And you know, it pushed super, super freaking hard. And he came out and they're like, oh my gosh, he's huge. Um, so thankfully, right when he came out, he was well enough to be placed on my chest, which I was so happy about. So then he was on my chest for a couple minutes. Um, Timmy got to cut the cord after a few minutes. Um, but then as they were still patting and rubbing him down, they took him um, in the same room, but over to his little bed, just to make sure that they got everything out of his lungs, that he was looking okay, that his color was looking okay, things like that. Um, and once that was all said and done, then they put him back on my chest, which I was so grateful for. They didn't do any of the weighing or anything. It was just immediately, as soon as he was okay, he got put back on my chest. Um, and then we had the golden hour of him just being on my chest and just laying there and talking to him. And it was amazing um and then right around an hour after he was born i was like i completely forgot like when you s tried to nurse them i was like is it like right away is it an hour i like totally forgot um and they said they're like yeah so what i did is actually went and looked at my pictures of when i gave birth to davis and then timmy took some photos of the first time trying to nurse him and it was around an hour after he was born and so i was like okay i think it's a good time um because all the nurses were pretty much like in and out at that point. Um, so then after we did skin to skin for an hour, it was just bliss. Um, it was amazing. I was getting stitched up at this point. Um, I did tear a second degree, which is the same that I tore the first time. And then um, I tried to nurse him. He did great. Um, and then a little bit after that, probably 30 minutes after that, um, he did some skin to skin with Timmy. And then a few minutes after that, they weighed him. Um, and this chunky boy, four weeks early, he was eight pounds, six ounces, 20, almost 21 inches long. He was huge. Um, they were shocked. They're like, there is no way that he is 36 weeks. They, every single nurse is like, he was eight, six, there's no way. So actually what they did at the hospital is they had a gestational doctor come in um, to look for like markings of a 36 weeker which is um, there's like something that has to do with like the wrinkling of their feet. Like their feet don't really have any wrinkles in them. Anyway, so he came in and he's like, yeah, he's 36 weeks, um, which was seriously wild. Um, everyone was completely shocked by that. He was a, gonna be a very big baby if he would have gone to full term. So anyways, thankfully with his size and um, you know, his health, he needed no NICU time. He did pass everything with flying colors, his car seat test. His, you know, jaundice test was a little rough at the beginning, but we would, by the time we left, he was all in the clear. Um, he did great. He, oh my gosh, I just could not be more grateful for no NICU time. Um, we were in the hospital for a couple days after that, but they wanted to make sure that he was getting good feedings. His first 24 hours, he was very, very sleepy and just had a really hard time eating. He was just so tired. Um, and uh, so they kept us an extra day just to make sure that he was getting enough to eat. So after monitoring his feedings for a while and seeing that I was getting good milk production, um, they finally discharged us after a couple days, which was so great. We were so anxious to leave. I was like so bored in there. I just wanted to get home in my comfy bed, have my baby just in my own space. Say hi, brother. Hi. What are you doing? He's not in mommy's pee anymore. See, look. Look, mommy, that's pee hot. What are you doing? Do you think he's so cute? Is your red your corner? Yeah, it kind of looks like he's a guy. You look like a massive man child next what to him. What do you think? I missed you. Oh, he's a duck. 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 He
his hair. <gasps> so he touches his hair? Yeah. So he's good. So he's good. So he's good. And that is the birth story of Benson. Um, Benson, Wayne Inman, eight pounds, six ounces, 20 and three fourths inches long, January 26th, 2021. Um, crazy, I cannot believe that I have two kids. Uh, I can't believe that I went through like birth again, like the whole birth thing again. And now we're three weeks in and I am feeling pretty good. I'm starting to feel like sort of my normal self again. I'm feeling like I'm getting more and more healed down there every day, which is so, such a good feeling. Um, and anyways, yeah, that is pretty much my birth story. If you have any questions, my battery is starting to die. Um, if you have any questions on any part of my birth story, feel free to leave them down below. I would love to chat with you, answer them. I love birth. I love babies. I love newborns. I love motherhood. It's truly like, it's where I'm at in life right now. I'm in the thick of it, but I really do. I love it so much. So if you have any questions or anything you want to know more about cholestasis, anything, Feel free to leave a comment below or you can always uh, comment and follow me and DM me on Instagram and respond pretty quickly on there too. So thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will catch you in my next one. Bye.